morning, Internet. It's Mr. T back again with the Chromeworks Club, our weekly live stream where we talk about coding, where we do coding, where we're ever all about the coding. So uh, it's an extra cold week here in Ottawa, Canada. I'm sure it is probably where a lot of you guys are, except for Thane in Florida. We hate you. Uh, no, we really don't. Anyway, so I'm joined by my regular uh, crew here on Discord. Um, I'm going to say some good mornings here, so if you can be ready by your mic in order of appearance. Uh, Chris, good morning, sir. How are you? Good. Good. Anything new in Jolly England today? Um, no, no at all. Nothing at all. Okay, boring. No. All right, next up is Gamer Davey here in Ottawa. Hi, Davey. No, Davey's not listening. Okay. Uh, if Davey wants to come on later and say hello, we can. Next up, Kendra here in uh, in Rockland, just outside of Ottawa. Hi, Kendra. Hi. Hi. So Kendra was chatting with me before. She's having a Lord of the Rings movie festival today. She's really excited about that. It's, uh, um, it's um, Trilogy, and we're doing a movie marathon because my brother's birthday is tomorrow. Oh, isn't that fantastic? So you're you're actually doing all 10 hours of Lord of the Rings today? Um, yeah, I think so. Oh, that is crazy. That's a lot of video to watch. Okay, well, enjoy that. Have and you seen the... only allowed junk food. Oh, no. Okay. Only well, allowed I... junk food. But yeah. Allowed junk All right. As a teacher, I have to officially disapprove, Kendra. Naughty, naughty, naughty. All right. How dare you. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thanks a lot, Kendra. Let's put Thane on the phone. Hi, Thane. Hi, Mr. T. How are things in Florida? Probably warmer than they are here, huh? Um, yeah, but yesterday, um, about two days ago, it was about 50-something degrees, which is Oh, cold. which is cold. cold. That's like cold. coat weather. All. That's like coat, coat weather, eh? Yeah, I, it's cold from where we come from. Huh. I saw a video um, on Reddit or someplace a couple of days ago showing frozen crocodiles in Florida. Like, they, they'd actually frozen into the water. Have you seen that before? Yeah, it was re it's really remarkable. They kind of hibernate and they just stick their snouts out of the water and they sit there in the ice waiting for it to melt, basically. Really cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I really, um, so yeah, it's like, I feel like 50 or 40 degrees is probably the coldest we're going to get in. Yeah, okay. We don't want to talk to you anymore. That's really depressing for us. <laughs> All right, and good morning also to Deck in London, England. Hi, Deck. Hi, How are things going with you there? Um, yeah, it's good. Good, it's good. Cold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is, is, is there snow on the ground in England? Um, no. No, not really. There, okay. Um, some people say that, um, I think that there might be snow soon, but I don't know. But okay. Know. Yeah, so definitely a lot warmer than we are. Okay, guys, I know you want to get onto some coding, so um, let's get going here. Um, let's get over to my screen here. So um, before I get started, I wanted to um, to talk about my remix rooms. Lately, uh, I haven't been getting a lot of love in the remix rooms, I have to tell you guys. So during the summer, when this thing was going um, really strong, what was happening was I would teach you guys how to make a game, and then the next week or the next day when I came back, I'd have all kinds of kids doing remixes for me, right? Um, which means they take my game, modify it, add some new graphical twists, and then I show it off, and it's a chance. It was just a really Really nice chance for kids who were watching my live stream to participate and feel like they were doing something right and so every week I get to show some of your work off well lately my remix rooms have been empty I just wanted to show you guys just in case you're not aware that um, so my remix room so this is my live stream page it's chromeworks.ca slash live stream and here usually on Thursday or Friday I post whatever our project of the week is going to be and it stays up there for a couple of days at the bottom there's always a link here to the remix room if you click on that it will bring you to a scratch studio and from here you can paste your um your project in here by clicking add projects and just paste the url of your project into here click this button and then your thing will appear in the studio and then the next week when i come back i'll see who's done stuff in the studio and you guys can get your um, work online so anyone who's watching at home especially the people who aren't part of my regular crew 
I'd appreciate uh, it if you really do something cool, if you show it off with me. And anytime at all, if you have a really cool scratch project that you do want me to show off, I'm happy to show it. Just email me at info at chromeworks.ca and I will get you online. So here's your chance to be just a little bit famous. Not very famous, but a little bit famous anyway. Um, you know, uh, small time YouTube famous. So, sorry, who was that? Um, Mr. T, uh, I couldn't find uh, Incredibox um, remix soon, but I made a remix for it. Oh, you did, eh? Um, okay. Um, set, shoot me the URL in the uh, in the chat, and I can show it right now if you have if you have it available. And ask Mr. T. All right. So um, anyway, the project today is Whack-A-Mole. Here comes uh, Dex's version of Incredibox. Let's see if we can uh, play that right now. All right, Dex. So if you can explain to us the different the changes that you made to this game. So yeah, I see some different icons here for sure. Let's click the green flag and see what happens here. And I'll try dragging yeah. the first one. All right, so are all the sounds different or just some of them? No, I didn't change the sounds. I did uh, color color effects. Oh, some color um, effects. Yeah. I have to make a thumbnail, but I never got to finish that. Okay. Yeah. But well, that's a fun it. little remix. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. I like so just just by adding a couple of sound of uh, visual effects, you've made change the look of the game quite dramatically, eh? Let's have a look at our cats here and see what you've done to the code. Um, so, where have you set the graphic effects? I don't even see it in here for the cats. Uh, um, I think it might be in the no, probably in the costumes. Yeah. Um... Oh, you've actually, oh, you've created, you've created colored costumes here. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. I thought you were using um, change graphic effects to do that. Like, um, so that, that, that was a different way you could have approached it, right? By, um, by going in every time that a costume change happened, which is right here in the next costume, you could probably have done something like um, change color effect by 25 or something for example i don't know what that will do to your project i'm going to mess it up pretty dramatically here but yeah yeah so that was just a that was a that was the way i thought you had done it but it turned out you'd found your own way of doing it with costumes so it's basically switching back and forth so if we're on beatbox here it's going to switch back and forth between these different costumes flute has two different colors Hey, and you use some gradients here too. That's pretty cool, actually. All right, well, thanks for showing that to me, Deck. So um, I don't have a whole lot on the agenda here for you guys today. Um, uh, my co-op crew is uh, retired for the season. So the four people who were with me last see, uh, for the second quad master of school are all gone off doing their own thing now. Um, uh, and I have at least six new co-op students. Very excited. You're going to meet some of them next week, and we're going to start producing content for you guys. Um, so right now, this week, while we're in between co-op students, I didn't have a lot of um, uh, a lot of time. Dex asking me if we want to do a Kahoot. Um, it's not part of the regular live stream deck, but um, I will do it. I have a new Kahoot, by the way, for cat and mouse, by the way. If you guys are doing cat and mouse in your classrooms, you should probably be aware that um, on my on my website, on the right on the main page here, I've got a link to it, to um, the Kahoot site for my thing. So if you want to host a Kahoot, um, you can click on this link. You'll need an account to get into it. This is more for teachers, though. I'm, so I just want teachers basically to know that if they want, if they've run the cat and mouse curriculum and they want to do a little quick assessment, they can, you do my cat and mouse Kahoot. I might actually do this Kahoot on my live stream at some point as well. I know that Deck would like me to do that. So I'm uh, definitely thinking about that. Um, anyway, so um, as I was saying, um, there's not uh, a lot of co-op material here today, so I don't have my the regular stuff that we've been running the last few weeks. Yaya did do an extra video game review for me, though, and so I'm going to be able to show you that now. Um, Discord people, I'm not sure you're going to be able to hear this. It sounds like you're probably not going to, so I apologize for that. But um, anyway, let's show you the video right now.
Hello everybody, my name is Yaya Noor and welcome to another Scratch Game Review. Today we will be going over a Scratch Remix that was released 12 years ago. That's right, we will be going over one of the most successful and old games on Scratch, Mario Game Remix. This game is a remix of the old Mario and Nintendo games I'm sure we are all familiar with. You can edit your player if you like before starting the game, and if you, and if you favor and like the game, you receive boosts and perks making it easier to win the game and reach the finish line. Now to begin, you will need to click on the green flag. Now this game is very different from, from the other games we reviewed, mainly because this has different stages and is somewhat challenging. All you have to do is avoid the spikes and other creatures, it's that simple. You also need to avoid falling down or else you will have to restart and you will lose all progress. This game is well designed and each stage gets more difficult depending on how long it takes you to complete each stage. My current high score is 2 minutes and the worldwide high score is 40 seconds. And I'm challenging all you kids to try and beat it. Thank you so much for tuning in on another fantastic game review and I'll see you next time. Oh, no one can hear it. I have that on my Game Boy. <laughs> Oh, okay, guys. So, guys on Discord, you know that the world can hear you when you're chatting with each other on here. I, I'm sorry that you um, weren't able to hear the audio for the for that little game review. Again, I'm still I, I'm I've started to lose hope on whether I can actually get sound patched out to Discord when I'm doing these videos. So, um, I apologize for that. But um, so, if you can make sure not to talk while videos are playing, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> But right, but we're doing some coding now, and you guys are welcome to join in and give me some suggestions while we're while we're on this part anyway. So, um, so the only other thing I have on the agenda is this big project that I was going to do today, the Whack a Mole. So let's get on to that now, and um, I'm going to teach you this fun new game. It's a nice uh, beginners ready game. There's a couple of slightly complicated things that we're going, but I'm going to go slow and I'll walk you guys through it. So um, let's get on to that right now. So you guys um, will be working off of a starter file, which is the file that has all the graphics and stuff. This hammer, for example, and uh, the groundhog animations and stuff like that. Whoa, that didn't work very well. Oh, I don't think my magnifier is working properly. I'm magnifying in Chrome instead of magnifying Mr. somewhere else. Yes? I'm in my own whack -mole project too. Okay, yeah, no, I did. I do remember that you sent me the link. Actually, the the Whack a Chick game. If you um, yeah, the game. send send me the link again in the. I uh, in yeah, it's there right now, eh? Okay, um, we actually, yeah. So why don't I show that right now? Actually. So this is Thane's version of Whack a Mole that he did a couple of months ago. When did you do this? Like way there, back during the summer. Um, I did this when. I think it was when I was in um, on my vacation. I was on my I was on my laptop doing a bunch of okay. mini games, scratch games. So I don't seem able to hit stuff, Thane. Like yeah, you're only allowed to hit. You can only hit them if you hit them with the gray part. The with the part. and I have to touch the actual yeah. chick with the gray part, right? Yes. Yes, that's. Fair. All right, because I haven't successfully hit one of them yet, or have I? No, I'm getting. Okay, I'm getting points, but the problem is there's no feedback. I can't tell that I hit, right? Because there's nothing happening here to tell me that I actually hit the thing. Okay. All right. All right. So that's one of the things we're going to be learning today is how to give some better feedback on whether things are working or not. And that's something that I've implemented in this game with this POW feature here. You can see the costume here. This is actually going to appear on top of the groundhogs when they get hit. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to have this graphic show up. So the, the uh, groundhogs are going to come out of the hole just by using costume changes. You see what I've done here. Uh, now, I couldn't just take the groundhog graphic and move it through because it wouldn't appear to be coming out of the hole. It would just be popping up and down off the screen. And so that's why I use this costume effect to basically make them grow up. And the last frame here, which is called ouch, you don't see it during the normal transition, but that's the one that's gonna appear when our character gets whacked, basically. 
All right, so let's get into the code here and I'll walk you guys through it. So as I was saying before, there's a starter file here that has all the graphics and stuff and the sound effects that you're gonna to need to make this game at home. Um, the address for that is inside the file description for this if you're watching this afterwards. But if you're working with me live, if you're on the live stream right now, I'm gonna paste a new address here. This is a file that I'm actually working on right now. So every time I hit the save button, you guys will be able to see everything that that I have done here. So if you're not interested in actually coding it along with me, you can just open the file up, look at it, play around with it a little bit. And then every time I hit save, you can refresh the screen and see all the coding that I've done. So it's the lazy way to do coding with Mr. T if you're interested. All right, so let's get working on this. Um, I'm, I'm gonna start with the mole carrot. And what we're gonna do is rather than, I could have duplicated the mole nine times cause I've got nine of them on the screen here, but um, the cooler and more efficient way to do it is using cloning. So what we're gonna do is basically stamp our guy down. He's invisible right now. I'm gonna plunk him on the screen here. I want him to start basically on the left here. Let's get him into a better costume. That's not really an appropriate costume. There we go. There's a proper groundhog. Uh, so I want him to copy himself three times across here. Then he's going to have to go down to the next row and copy himself three more times. And then go down to the next row and copy himself three more times, basically. So we're just going to use some cloning and um, some moving effects inside a loop to do that. And I'll walk you through that. I'm going to hide the rest of the stuff on the screen here so that you don't have to stare at it while we're making this. Okay, so back to the code. Let's start with a green flag. And um, what the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna have the, um, the master guy just hide. This is usually what I do with clones because we don't want the uh, the guy sticking around on the screen. What, what has to uh, happen though is when I start as a clone, later on when I do create clones, we want them to be visible. So that will turn off the invisibility every time these clones appear and then they'll be able to, you'll be able to see what's going on. Okay, so I'm not gonna do any more of the cloning right now. I'm just gonna get started with the uh, with the making of clones here. So the first thing I wanna do is establish my starting position. What we're gonna be doing is popping this guy to a new location. And so at the end of this whole process, he's gonna be way over here. And when we restart the game, we don't want him stuck here. We want him back in his starting position. So let's go ahead and we'll grab a go to block here. We'll enter the proper numbers to get him into his proper position. I have minus 145. Uh, for the X and the Y is is 110. Now it doesn't have to be exactly that. You guys can rearrange this however you like, but that will get him to a starting position. So no matter what I do, he'll be um, he'll be visible in this position here. Okay, um, now, so we wanted to go three times across here. So what we're gonna do is just use a, a repeat loop, repeat three times. And inside there, we're going to create a clone of myself. So let's go ahead and create a clone of myself using this block. I still think my magnifier is still not working, eh? I should wanna get that running here. Magnifier, there we go. And let's see if I can do the funky zoom. Yeah, no, that's still the wrong new zoom. Oh, okay, now I've really messed things up. Whoa! Okay, I have completely destroyed my... All right, I think we're good now. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. All right, so we're making clones of ourselves three times basically. And every time that we make a clone of ourselves, we want to move over to the right. So I usually do this kind of stuff with trial and error. You could probably do some math with this. Since they're already pointing to the right, I can just tell them to move in that direction. So I'm going to grab a move 10 steps block here and plop it in there. And you'll see that we'll create three guys who are just offset uh, by each other by 10 pixels, right? So now we just got to play around with this number and see what distributes them nicely on the screen. A hundred's no good. 150, you'll see is a little bit, well, that might be okay. I think the number I finally settled on was 140 steps. And that to me looks properly centered. So um, we've got that happening three times. And then 
what we're going to do is at the end of that, after we're done repeating it three times, we basically like a typewriter reaching the end. We have to go back to the beginning again and then move down a step. So it's exactly like taking a typewriter. You get, That's old technology. You guys probably barely know what a typewriter is anymore. But so at the end of every line, you have to manually do the carriage return, rip the thing back to the left and then bring it back down to the next line. And then you can start typing again. And that's what we're going to do now as well. So we're going to move our X. So our guy's way over here, like way about 200 X. We're going to set his X back to the starting position, which is minus 145, minus 145, whoa, not zero, 145. And we're going to move him down as well. So we're going to, um, now we don't want to set the Y because it's going to be relative this. So, so we want it to go down a certain distance from here and then down a certain distance. And that's why we've used a change Y here. The distance that I've played around with here turns out to be about minus 100. So we're going to enter that, and you'll see um, that the that the guy will appear down here in the next spot. And now he can start making clones again. So what we want him to do is loop around here and go back and repeat this one more time. So I'm going to take another repeat loop. I'm going to call it repeat three again. I'm going to take this repeat loop and the two blocks underneath it and put it in here. So it's going to go across, do my three, then it'll come around the loop again, move down, and then repeat this three more times. And as you'll see, when I click the green flag, I've got a lovely little grid of groundhogs here. Perfect. All right. The only other thing I want to do in this little block of code here is when we whack one of these guys, they're all going to react if we're not careful, basically. I'm going to go whack and they're all going to go ouch because the Scratch have no idea if which one of them is the one that's been hit. And so one of the things we're going to do to make sure that we know which of these guys has been hit is we're going to give each of them a little name tag. And that's a variable. I've already created it here. It's a variable called clone ID. And you've seen this kind of thing before. It's a local variable, which means that I went in to create the variable under make a variable. I clicked on for this sprite only. And that makes it so that every one of these groundhogs has his own clone ID. Instead of a global variable where there's one number that all of them share, each of them will have a different number. And I can show you that in action. Let's hide this variable. I don't need to see it here. By telling these guys when they're created to say what their number is. So I'm gonna go to my looks commands here, go say, and I'll tell them to say their clone ID. There we go. Now, when I click the green flag, you'll see, uh-oh. So right now the clone ID is nine. I haven't actually assigned it, right? So in this block here, I have to go set clone ID. Okay, what am I gonna do here? So at, at the beginning, I set it to zero so that it starts as zero. And then every time we go around this loop, I want it to increase by one. So I'm gonna go change clone ID by one. And so watch what happens now with that little modification. Now they're all reporting a different number. The first one's one, two, three, all the way through nine here. So we've given them a little ID number. We don't need to say clone ID anymore, by the way, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you how that works. And so now they all have an ID number. When I hit one, I can check what the ID number is of the guy who got hit and use that to make sure that he's properly deleted. So that's the way that part works. We're gonna get into the collision detection part later. Let's start working on the hammer now. So I'm gonna click over on the hammer. Let me save my file in case you guys wanna catch up with what I'm doing here. Let me have a sip of coffee while I'm at it. All right, so our hammer, we're gonna do some clever stuff with our hammer here to, uh, to get it spinning around and whacking. I'm gonna show it now, I've had it invisible. So this is just a piece of clip art I downloaded off the internet. It's a nice looking little thing. And just like Thames Hammer, we're gonna have it so that every time I click, it comes spinning down and whacks itself onto one of these guys or wherever it is that you click, basically. So let's get started with that. I'm gonna to go to my events and grab a green flag here. Let's zoom in a bit. So uh, we are going to be making this guy visible and invisible or just, in yeah, we're going to be hiding him at the end of the game. So we have to, we need a look, a show command here just to make him visible again the next time that we play. And um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to make sure he's pointed in the right direction as well because we're going to be spinning him around every time that we do it. So let's just make sure our position is properly set up. We'll go point in direction 90. 
So normally you don't have to change these settings unless you modify it during the game, but we are modifying the direction. So you want to make sure that we reset that. Okay, we're going to do a forever here. That's basically going to be waiting for clicks. So I'm going to go forever. Um, one of the things we're going to keep doing forever here is keep moving this hammer to the front because other things are occasionally going to be coming to the front and we have to remind the hammer that it's in the front. So uh, every time it comes around this loop, it's going to reestablish itself at the front in front of the groundhogs. So let's say go to front layer. And now we want it to, to map out to where our mouse cursor is. So I'm going to tell it to go to mouse cursor. Let's go go to mouse cursor, whoops, mouse pointer. I'm going to a random position now. And you can see that now it's following my mouse around wherever I go. And now when I click on it, it'll be able to whack down on, on my characters. Notice that my mouse cursor is sticking to the middle of the hammer, right? And that has to do with where the center of your object is set up in Scratch. For So if I go look at my costume here, you can see that when I click on it, that there's a little dot here that tells you where the center of the object is. I could, if I wanted this to rotate differently, I could take the center and move it to the edge here. And now you'll see um, when I click the green flag that now my hammer is actually be contr being controlled by the tip or I could move it to the head. Let's do it that way just for, for giggles. And you can see that now it's sticking to the head of that. So wherever it is that you put the center of that object, that's what it's going to be glued to. So I'm going to make it the middle. That seems like the most logical place to go. We'll just snap it back to the middle here. And now we're controlling it quite nicely. So you can modify that depending on, on how you want to play. But it's also going to affect how the thing rotates. So when we tell it to rotate, is it going to rotate around this axis here? Or is it going to rotate off of this edge here? And that depends on where you put your center of your object, right? Um, all right, I'm, I do want this in the center and I don't have to worry about, oh, I do have to reset the angle because it thinks this is angle 90 now, which is no good. All right, here we are. And I think we're properly set up to get going here. Um, all right, so as I said, we're waiting here for a mouse click to know when we're, we're supposed to bring it down. So let's go if my mouse is down. I'm going to grab an if statement and inside there I'm going to go to my sensing blocks and grab this block here that says mouse down. And that will basically report back a yes if I've clicked my mouse. So you can see that it's saying false because my mouse isn't down. It's impossible actually to get it down uh, to true here because every time I, I unclick it is when it actually tells me to do uh, or it gives me the answer here. So uh, anyway, but now it's detecting mouse down and you can tell um, I could add any sound effect here like this drum boing sound now. And you can see that every time that I click, I get that sound effect. So the sound effect we do want to play here is the squeaky toy sound effect. This is the default scratch sound. And we'll just play that sound every time we do it. And then we'll start our little fellow rotating. So how you do this rotation kind of depends on how fast you want it to be moving. I'm gonna I'm gonna do mine so that it goes through four frames of animation here. So inside the if statement, I'm gonna grab a repeat and I'm gonna tell it to go four times. And I want it to go roughly 80 or 90 degrees. So in my version of it here, I've told it to turn 20 degrees four times, basically. So let's let me show you that. So I did a play sound until done here, which is actually no good because you notice that my thing didn't start going down until the music ended. That was a bit of a booger on my part. I'm going to go back and grab the other sound block called start sound, squeaky toy. And now you'll see that when I click, it'll happen immediately at the same time as a sound rather than after the sound plays, okay? So if you wanted this to be a slow, uh, faster process, you could do fewer frames of animation, like I go two here, but now I need to make my angle go more. So I would go 40, so that still adds up to 80 or 90 or so. And let me show you how that, that works. So that would be much faster. Or I could go much slower. I could go 10 and have it go by four degrees, but that in practice will be too slow for your game. I don't think you're going to want to do it this way. So again, you can see that that slows it down. So I just wanted to show you guys that you can control the speed of your hammer by changing how many times this goes around the loop. I found that for repeating four times and doing 20 was a pretty good speed. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's, that's looking pretty good to me. 
All right. Um, now I'm going to do the hammer coming up in a second, but the first thing I wanted to do was, I, since you're you're not actually clicking, the spot where you click in the game isn't the spot where your groundhog is going to be, right? So what I want to do is give the player a little bit of a hint about where the bottom of this hammer is going to be, because they kind of have to guess it. So what I've done is I've created another sprite here that's just a uh, little circle. You can see it's a little gradient circle that I've created here. And that's going to do a couple of functions. First of all, it's going to tell us which part of the hammer or where we're actually hitting. So I've called it a collider because it's the part, this collider is the part that's actually going to be detecting whether it hit the mole or not. The hammer would not be a good thing to collide with because then I could hit this guy with the end of my hammer, for example, and he would still be clubbed in the head, which doesn't make any sense. So I want to make sure it's only at the bottom of the swing and only right at the spot where my hammer hits that it happens. So what we're going to do, do is tell this collider to go to the spot where my hammer comes down. And I wanted to leave this running here so that I could have it frozen in place so that I could show you. So let's go over to the collider and we'll code that right now. So over on my collider, I'm going to grab a green flag and we're just going to tell it to go to that position. I also want it to be kind of ghostly looking. So I'm going to set the ghost effect to maybe 50% or so. So I'm going to go to my looks here. I'll go to go change color effect and change it to ghost effect and set that to 50. Now the thing is hiding right now. So let's make it visible so you can see it. And you can see that when I add the ghost effect, it becomes very, very faint here. And it's just a little visual hint to tell you where your hammer is pointing at and what your hammer is going to be hitting, of course. Okay, so now let's grab a forever. And we're going to put a go to command in here. So we'll go grab the one that says go to random position. I'm going to change it to hammer. And so it's a little hard to see here, but um, the thing is now on top of the hammer. You can see it right underneath my cursor here. It's quite hard to see because it's almost invisible. But so it's, it's not in the right place. We're going to have to move it over a little bit to put it down to the bottom of my hammer blow. And we're just going to do that by playing around with our X and Y coordinates. So we're not, it's not, we're not going to see it in this position because inside of Forever Loop, every time we go around, it does all the movement calculations and then it updates what it looks like. So if I do two or three extra movement commands here, they're all going to be take place before you even see this. So you're never going to see it in the wrong place. Let me show you. I'll move it over. Um, so let's go change our X coordinate to move it to the right here. We're going to change our X by 30. So we're taking it from the middle of the hammer and moving it to the right hand side of the hammer. Let me click the green flag here and show you. And so now instead of being on the middle, it's a little bit to the right. You can see, I think that number will probably work. Now we need it to go down as well. So I'm going to change my Y here by the number I picked was minus 45. Let's see what that looks like. And so you can see the, the shadows underneath the hammer here. And then when I click the hammer, it actually goes down in the exact spot where the shadow was. So now when I'm trying to click guys, I can use this hammer as a way to tell whether I'm clicking on the wrong spot to club this guy in the head like that. Okay. Um, that is really all the coding we have to do on that collider, but we're going to be using that to tell whether we hit the moles or not. All right, so let's go back to the moles now and we'll start working on that collision with that with the collider. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I had to do there. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to go back to the, to the, when I started the clone here inside the mole. And we've got telling the guy to to, um, to show. Let's get them to the proper costume. Right now we've got all our guys in their upward position, but we actually want them to start in their hole. So let's tell them to switch to the costume that's called hole. And now we've got our board reset to the way that we want it. All right, we're gonna grab a forever here. Sorry, I just need to sit up a bit. Let's grab a forever and we're gonna grab an uh, actually, we're going to modify that part later. So I'm going to make this a little more complicated later. We're going to use one of the dreaded if-else statements later. But for now, I can get this running in a simple form, not using an if statement at all. We can just, uh, we can just um, tell them to start moving up and down here randomly. And then later on, we're going to put it inside an if statement because we want them to do two different things. But I'll get to that in just a minute, guys. 
So uh, the first thing we want to do is, so there's nine guys here. We don't want them all popping out at the same time. So we're going to have them sit here and cool their heels, waiting for a random number to come, come up. So each one of these guys is going to pick a random number from one to 10. And that will be the number of seconds he waits before he goes up. Now, 10 seconds seems a long time to wait. But in practice, it's going to mean that one of these guys is going to come up almost every second, right? Because it's nine guys and 10 seconds. So statistics seem to say that most of the time, every second, and one of the guys will be popping up. But sometimes two or three of them might pop up and sometimes none of them might pop up. We're in the hands of fate. Okay, so we're gonna wait one to 10 seconds and then we're gonna have them go up. So I'm gonna grab a repeat 10 and there's actually 10 frames of animation that have them coming up out of the hole here. So all I need to do inside here is give them a next costume command. So let's go next costume from our looks menu here and you'll see that they will start going up. So they're going to wait, and now they're going to start popping up out of the hole one at a time. And you can see some of them are getting the same command twice, and that's why they go back into their hole and come back out again. It's a little confusing because we, we haven't finished resetting the costumes. Okay, so that's how that works. And at the bottom of, um, so once they get up to the top, we're going to have them just wait at the top for a little bit. Now, this is, a, uh, again, a spot where you can customize this if, this if you want. I'm going to put wait one second and put a random number in there. I don't want them waiting at the top for long because that is going to make the game too easy. So I'm going to go with an incredibly hard number, 0.1. Uh, as, the, as the first one to pick in 0.5. So the longest they're ever gonna stay up is half a second. If you wanted them to stay up longer or if you thought this 0.1 was too fast for you, you can always change these numbers around, no big deal. All right, and so what we're gonna do when, once we're done waiting is we're gonna go back down again. So I'm gonna go re this repeat this repeat loop. Basically, we're gonna repeat 10 times down here but how do you go to previous costume? There's no actual previous costume button here, right? So this is something I've shown some of you guys in previous weeks. What we're gonna do is use this costume number command here, which was down at the bottom of our, of our um, looks commands here. And I'm going to tell it to switch costume to a certain costume number. So let's go switch costume. I should save my game. I haven't done it for a while. All right, switch costume to a certain costume number. But instead of telling it a number, we'll tell it we'll tell it to do some math. We'll tell it to do the number that we were just at minus one. So let's go costume number minus one. So every time it switches costume now, it's gonna it's gonna reverse its costume changes until it gets back down to zero again. Let's watch that now and see what that looks like. So here come my bad guys. One, yeah, they come up, they wait for a second, and then they pop down. There's three of them at a time. Beautiful. Okay, that's looking good. All right. So those guys are coming down now. Um, and this part is basically done. The Now there's one other little bit of code. Uh yeah, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back to the collision detection in a second here. Okay, so I think we need to work on the hammer next. So we're gonna do something a little bit so let's go back to our hammer now. There's only one other little block I wanted to add in here. So we've got our hammer coming down off the screen. Oh we had it hold it. So right now I haven't programmed my hammer to go back up again. All right, so we're gonna program our hammer to go back up again. And um, so I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, guys. I wanted to show you kind of the way that I make these games, right? So often I'm not, you, you can't really build a proper project like this one sprite at a time. I, you wanna be able to watch what's happening and make sure that it's working as you go. So often you do a little bit of work on one thing, then go over to the other thing, get that working, and then see how they interact with each other and then go back to the one thing again. So I'm showing you this time, this week a little more organically how I make these projects to get them running. Okay, so now that our hammer is going down in the right spot and our collider's set up in the proper position, we can move our hammer back up again. So I'm gonna just um, grab another repeat loop here. And we're gonna tell it to repeat four times again. And then I'm gonna go to my motion blocks and tell them to move 20 degrees in the opposite direction. And so that will bring my hammer back up again once he's done. Let me show you that. There we go, this guy is spinning around nicely now. 
So uh, the the last thing I want to do is uh, the only time I want him to actually check and see whether he's hit a guy is when he's at the bottom of the swing. So right here between these two repeat loops is where I want to start checking for collisions. Now I have to be checking for collisions inside the mole so that they know which one they are when they get hit. They need to know which ID they are. So I'm just going to send a broadcast over from the hammer to the moles telling them whether they got to check whether they got hit or not. So let's go to our events. We'll broadcast a message. So that's right between the two loops here. And I'm going to go new message. And we're going to call that message check collision. And I actually spelled that correctly. There we go. Fantastic. I'm going to save my file here. All right, so every time I come down to the bottom of my hammer swing here, um, the mole needs to check and see if he's touching this collider, basically. And so let's go back to our mole and we can get that working next. So let's go when I receive check collision inside the mole here. And we basically want to inside here check and see. So we don't want to kill the guy even if we're touching him. Um, but we don't want to kill him if he's in the wrong costume, right? Because if he's in this whole costume and we click on him, we might still collide with the sprite, but we don't want hit the uh, mole to get whacked because it's hiding in his hole, right? So what we basically need to do here is check and see whether we're touching him and he's out of his hole. So let's do that with an if statement. And inside that if statement, we're going to grab an and so that we can check for two things instead of checking for one thing. All right, so we're going to say if touching collider. So let's go touching collider. So that's the first thing we have to test for, whether we're actually clicking on the proper sprite. And now we need to know if it's not, if the costume is not a hole, that means it's heads out and we can click on this guy. So let's go not. So not costume name equals hole is we're going to put here. So I'm going to grab an equal sign, put it in there. I'm just going to type in the word hole. And in this side, I'm going to put under our looks commands here, I'm going to go costume name, which is hole. So if I'm not wearing the whole costume and I'm touching, that means my guy will get whacked. And we can go ahead and, um, and code what's going to happen when he gets whacked here. Um, all right, so what's going to happen? The first thing, now here's where things get um, a little bit confusing, and I want you guys to understand what I'm doing here. So when I whack this guy, um, he, the code is going to have to basically stop in the middle of going up and going down here, and it's not going to want to do that. It's only gonna, If I put uh, some kind of a check statement in here, it's only going to check and see if it collided or check if its costume has to change after it's done a whole bunch of costume changes, which is going to make the game sluggish and not responsive. Now, this is a little hack I learned from Jeffrey that works really well in these situations. If you're in the middle of a long animation and you want to reset it and just have the thing react right away, the way to do it with a clone is you just kill the clone and then make it respawn itself again. And that way the newly respawned clone will, will be at the start of its animation and will be under control of when its animation happens. Um, so instead of waiting for the uh, for the mold to, to be all the way up before we can see if we hit it, we can have it tell any time we want to, basically. So um, we're going to do that by right in here, by creating a clone and then deleting the old version of the clone. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go to my control blocks. I'm going to go create a clone of myself. That will create a duplicate of the mole with the exact same costume and with the exact same location in that spot. Um, we're going to, since we've killed this guy right now, we're going to change our score in here as well. So let's go change our score by one. And while we're at it here, let's reset our score at the beginning. We'll set our score to zero so that our score resets itself at the beginning of our game. All right, so we're going to change our score by one every time that happens. And now I basically want to make sure that the, the, the guy that I clicked, I want to remember what his ID number is so that I can do stuff with that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable called hit ID and hit ID is not a, um, a local variable, it's a global variable. There's only, you can only hit one guy at a time. So that, that number is going to be the number of the guy that I hit. So let's change this to hit ID. We're going to say the number of the guy that I just hit is 
my clone ID, his number. So we're going to ask him, what's your number? Okay, that's my hit ID. That's the guy that I hit. Now that I'm done with that, I can delete this clone. I don't need him anymore. So let's go to our control block, delete this clone, remembering that there's a new version of him that's going to start. But when the new guy starts, he's going to go back to it when I started the clone and start this whole code from the beginning instead of running through these animations. So before he even goes through these animations, we want him to check and see if he's just been hit. And so that's where, where we're going to bring that if else statement in here. So I'm going to drag all the blocks from outside the forever loop, replace them with an if else statement. And so what's going to happen here basically is if I'm the guy who got killed, I'm going to wear a dead costume. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going through my normal costume changes. So I'm putting all of the, that code back into the else here. And what I'm testing for here basically is whether the hit ID matches my ID. I'm going to have each one of them say, um, so I just hit number two. Are you number two? Nope. Then you're going to go to the else statement. Are you number two? Oh, I am number two. Well, then I'm going to follow these instructions here. So I need an equal sign in here. I'm going to say if my hit ID, if the hit ID is equal to my clone ID, my, my uh, groundhog's number, then I'll know that he's the guy who got killed and I'll know what to do. Okay, so for a second here, we'll bring him in front of the, the hammer so that we can see the expression on his face when he gets hit. We'll go go to front. We're going to play a sound file here. So I'm just going to go start sound bonk. And you can hear that bonk sound. That's a fun little cartoon noise. And we're going to make him wear a costume that's called ouch that will make him react. All right, um, let me just show you what that looks like. We're not quite done coding, but I, it's enough that I can show you. So let's wait for one of you guys to appear. Oh, okay, let's try that. Whoa, okay. So we got some stuff not set up properly here. Um, set hit I. Let me just finish doing this code here. I think it will probably sort itself out in the end here. So let's so go say go to front layer, play... Um, Oh, I put some of this code in the wrong place, didn't I? What have I done here? All right, I I got a little, I was a little asleep here, guys. So I'm sorry, we're going to have to reconstruct this. This is why it's not working. I was talking and not thinking. So I put these blocks down in the wrong place. This repeat loop here 10 times should only have next costume in it, right? And here in the if statement, the if part of it is where we have to be putting this code. So I'm going to put the bonk sound and the ouch in this spot. And now I think we'll be working properly. No, whoa. No, it's still messed up, eh? Start sound, go to front layer. Oh, I'm not resetting my hit ID. So every time I do this, I have to... All right, let me just finish coding this part and I'm pretty sure it will work when I'm done. So I'm going uh, basically to have him play that ouch animation. Then I'm gonna have him wait at the top for just half a second. So wait 0.5 seconds. That's enough time for you to see the expression on his little face. Then we're gonna have him disappear. So we're gonna have the costume. We're gonna go switch costume to a hole again here. After the wait, we'll go hole. And now the last thing that, that's going to fix this up here is I'm going to set that hit ID, the ID of the guy who got hit, I'm going to set it back to zero again. So that after that one guy hits, he won't keep getting hit. And that's why it kept repeating itself. So we're going to go set hit ID back to zero and that will reset our number again. And there we go. So now our hit ID is zero. No one's showing up as hit. But when I hit one of them, you'll see, there we go. And he gets whacked. Let's try this guy. Nope. There we go. Beautiful. All right, we're getting closer on this guy. So just a couple more things we have to do. So this is all working perfectly. We're just going to add some visual and audio elements now to make the game work. So we basically got a functioning game now. Everything's working the way that it should be. I'm going to go over to this pow and make it appear now. So every time I go down with my hammer, I want a little pow to appear on the screen just like that. And we're gonna have it appear and then fade away after a second or so. So let's go ahead and code that now. Um, so when green flag clicked, we're gonna tell it to show because we hide it at the end of the game. 
So we need it to show again. We're also going to make it invisible with a ghost command here. So we're going to set our ghost to default to 100. So it's going to start off invisible in two different ways. But we don't um, need to make it in invisible until the end of the game. So during the game, we're just going to use this ghost effect to control its invisibility. Okay, let's go grab a forever here. And inside there, we're going to tell it to wait until a guy gets hit. Until somebody gets hit. It doesn't really matter who. We just need it to wait until somebody gets hit. So what I'm going to do is take that hit ID. I know the hit ID is normally zero. But when it's greater than zero then I will know that somebody got hit, right? So let's go grab a greater than sign here and we're gonna go, sorry, let's go wait until, and we'll grab a greater than sign. And we'll tell it, if my hit ID is greater than zero, that means I know for sure I got hit if that number is higher. So it's just the, the loop's gonna pause until that happens, then quickly run through making the pow appear and disappear, and then it'll go around here and wait for the next guy to get hit again. All right, so let's tell it to go to the front layer. We want this to appear at the front and uh, right here. We tell it to we want it to go to the spot where the collider is, so it hits in that exact right spot. So let's say go to collider. There we go. Now it's invisible, so we need to make it visible. Let's set the ghost effect. Set ghost effect, color effect, we'll change it to ghost. And we'll set that to zero. And I can show that to you now. It's not gonna disappear yet, but we're halfway there. So when I click on a guy to kill him, there we go, the pow appears. There we go, beautiful. And so now all we have to do is make it fade away. So I'm gonna make it fade away with a 20 times repeat loop repeat 20 and so we have to get uh, up from uh, from 0 to 100 so we have to repeat 5 times 20 times 5 is 100 so if we if we change it 5% each time so let's go change ghost effect by 5 and we're good to go oh by the way um i want to say hi to Kirill Korot Key, who I believe is talking to me from Russia. So we've got a fan here from Russia today. Uh, uh, Kirill, I'm sorry, I didn't notice your text before. Um, so I think you might be our very first viewer from Russia. So um, say hi, tell us what city you're from, how old you are. Kirill, if you're interested, um, I would just like love to give you a shout out. I believe you are my very first viewer from Russia. So very happy to have you aboard here today. Tell us uh, tell us uh, what city you come from and how old you are or anything else you want me to tell and I will read it out on the live stream. Okay, guys. So um, our ghost effect is set up here. We're going to change it by, hold it. So we're repeating 20 times. I did this wrong while I was talking. I got distracted. Repeat, set ghost effect to five. There we go. So let's try this again now. Green flag. And let's kill this guy. The pow appears and it is not fading away. Hold it, what am I doing wrong here? Change ghost effect by five. Hold it, repeat 20 times. This absolutely should be working. Wait until it go to front, set ghost effect to zero to make it visible. And then, cho! Oh! I'm surprised you guys didn't catch it. I was to be changing my ghost effect here, not setting it, guys, because I'm just making it five. That's no good. I want it to go up by five every time. So let's go ghost effect by five. Let's have a look here again. And I'll whack one of these fellas. There we go, and then it fades away. There, perfect. And you can see the guys are, oh, I missed him. There we go, beautiful. All right, our game's looking pretty good. The last thing I want to do is add a fun little soundtrack here. So I've got that going in the background. We also want to uh, basically have a countdown timer here. I only have the score listed here right now, and I've, I've got a different way of doing the countdown timer I want to show you guys. What we're basically going to do is have no timer appear for a while, but then after the music loop has gone around a few times, we're going to tell it to switch to the next background, which is this one here that has a five in it, and then four three, two, one, and then 
game over. So we're using the costumes here instead of a timer and just to give a little bit of a different graphic effect in our game here. So that's our goal here is basically to get some background music going and then to um, have it uh, uh, change costumes after a while and then start going down every time we go around the music. All right, so we're also gonna get our music going at the same time here. Oh, I'm on the wrong version of the game here. All right, so um, we're gonna go when green flag clicked. Now we're gonna use, um, we're, we're using a background music track here that I'm gonna play for you right now. It's just a fun little cartoon theme. I downloaded this from freesound.org, which is my favorite uh, clearinghouse for free audio files, by the way. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna play that sound in a loop, basically. And every time it goes around and plays that once, it's gonna basically um, keep move our countdown timer forward by a bit. So we're gonna, we have a variable in here called count. I'm gonna go set count to zero at the beginning. And we're going to switch our background right now. So let's go switch backdrop. Do not wait here. Switch backdrop to the first one, grass background. There we go. And so that will get it going to the basic one with no numbers in it. Now let's get into a forever loop here. We'll go forever. And every time we go around this loop, I want to change the count by one. So let's go variables, change count by one. And now we're gonna play our sound. Now remember, we wanna play our sound and not have it restart itself. So we're gonna to have to go to our sound commands here and go play sound until done. This is a good example of where you wanna use play sound until done. Cause if we didn't, it would just keep playing the sound over and over again. Let me uh, show that to you guys just so that you understand. So here it is the wrong way with the start sound. And we just get the sound restarting itself over and over again. But when we go play sound until done, it will just loop around playing the entire song just the way we like it here. Um, now, every time we loop around here, we're going to wait for half a second. So I'm going to go wait 0 0.5 seconds, and then we're going to play the music again. Before we change the music, though, we want to basically check how many times we've been around this circle. So um, I'm going to tell it don't switch backdrops here until we've been around this loop a few times. So I'm going to say if count is greater than five. So the first five times it's gonna ignore this um, this um, next backdrop message. Let me put, pop the next backdrop into here. All right, so the first five times the count's gonna be one, it's gonna ignore it, not change the backdrop. It's gonna play all the music, then come around. And after the fifth time, it's gonna start changing the backdrops. And that's when our five, four, three, two, one is gonna start. Um, the other thing we can do here is we can tell it when the, when the costume gets to the last costume, that's where, when our game is going to end. So I'm going to grab a second if statement in here, and I'm going to go grab an equal sign and pop it into there. And I'm going to say if count, sorry, if costume number is equal to seven, we could do this with count, but I'm going to do it with costume number because I know that the last backdrop, the game over, is costume number seven. Or I could go grass background seven, that would work as well. But let's just go costume number here. So I'm going to go costume or backdrop number, sorry, not costume number. So I'm going to go, if my backdrop number equals seven and Deck is saying that my game should be called the Whack-A-Mole for Groundhog Day. That's not a bad idea, Deck. Work. Uh, I'm going to go change this to Whack-A-Mole Celebrating Ground. Is it because uh, at the bottom it says today's project just. Where did it say that? Oh, you know what? Yeah, well, Joust is kind of our project, by the way. At 11 o'clock, we're releasing part three of Joust, which will be the finishing project. Oh, that's what you were suggesting, eh? Well, that's probably a better idea. So, um, yeah, you know what? I But that's an excellent point, though, is we should probably be talking about what we're teaching right now rather than that. I'm just going to go in there and really quick it, real click, modify it really quickly. So let's go um, uh, whack. And we'll call Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day Edition. 
whack a mule. Okay, there we go. All right, there. Are you happy now, Deck? Yeah. Okay, there you go. A little OCD there, but that's all right. Uh, all right, so if backdrop number is equal to seven, we're going to broadcast a message here that says game over. So let's go new message, call it game over. And at the end of that, we're just going to do a stop all. We don't want anything fancy happening here. That's just going to kill the game off after the seventh one. So we're ready to, te to test uh, the almost finished version of our game. I want to do one more twist before we do that. But what I want to do is um, hide all the rest of these graphics when the game is over. So I'm going to tell this collider that when he receives the game over message, that he should hide. I'm going to drag the same code over to the hammer so that the hammer hides too. So now the hammer will hide at the end of the game. The pow will already be hidden. The mole holes, we don't have to hide them, I don't think. So um, that, sh well, actually, maybe we should hide these guys. So let's, gra uh, let's grab the this over from hammer and drop it over to the hole as well. Okay, so everyone's hiding when the game is over here. Let me just show you what that looks like now. All right, here we go. Where are the bad guys? Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Missed. Gotta be fast. Nice. And you can see, so I don't want to play through this whole thing yet. I just want you to show you that after five times through the music, the costumes are going to start changing. So it should be, I think, this time around. Let's see. There we go. And now we're to five. And then when it changes, it'll go down to four. And so that'll tell you that your game's getting close to ending. One last thing I wanted to do that I thought would be fun here is I want it to get frantically a little fast, the music to play a little faster and a little higher every time we go around the loop here. So I'm going to go back to my backdrop here and I'm going to tell it after it plays the music, um, the next time around we want it to play at a higher pitch basically. So I'm going to go to my sound commands here. I'm going to go change pitch effect by 10. And what that will do is make the music play a little bit higher and a little bit faster every time we go around the loop. And that'll be a fun little uh, modification. All right, we're going to play this through to the end this time if you guys want to bear with me. And can you hear how it gets a little bit louder or a little faster? Oh, ah! Whoa, there's my five. Ah, I'm always one second behind these guys. My wife says she's awesome at this game. She claims that she's the whack-a-mole champion of the world. I'm not sure if we can confirm that. And there we go, game over. Now, if you guys want to fancy this game up a little bit, you could add some game over music here before the game ends. Do some wah, wah, wah kind of sound or something. You could also add a splash screen at the beginning of this game. You could change the game to something else. I can't wait to see a Gamer Davies Mario themed version of Whack-A-Mole or maybe Dex Among Us version of, um, of Whack-A-Mole. So I'd love for... Yeah, I'd love for you guys to do a quick remix for me. Next week, I would love to show a whole bunch of whack-a-mole remixes. So I'm challenging you guys out there in TV land to come up with something for me for next week. You know how to do it. You can save it back in the remix room, which uh, you can get to by going to my live stream page on my website and just clicking on the word remix room. And uh, anything that gets put up here that's even mildly interesting, I will show on next week's live stream. So, did you guys think that was fun? Have you guys been building the game? Let me actually, I didn't save it for you guys, eh? Let me go back to my file here again. Let me save it in case anyone's looking at it at home. So there is a finished version of this file available right now, and you can um, just go to my live stream page and click on the link there to play it, or you can find it in the description for this video file as well. Um, hope you guys on Discord like that. Was that a fun little project? Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, good. Uh, oh, Thane's gone, eh? I want... Uh, pardon me? I don't think I heard what you said. Anyway, uh... 
Oh, it was fun. Good, Kendra. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So, um, oh, Thane is back online. So, Thane, did you pick up a few tips? Can you see how you might want to improve your own chick game a little bit? Well, I was actually playing with my brothers. I'm sorry. I, I already made a vacuum mole game, so I... I know, but, but Thane, I want you to up your whack-a-mole game. I'm telling you, I gave you some good techniques in this that you could use to improve your game. So, have a look at my tutorial, and I would okay. love... I would love for you to do an extreme makeover on your own whack-a-mole game this week if you're interested. Okay, buddy? Yeah, because they already added the sound when they get hit. So, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. I also wanted to say hi to a big genius on YouTube. I'm not sure who you are, but say, but uh, uh, but I'm going to give you a big shout-out because he said hi. So we had two new people uh, visiting us this week, uh, big genius and Kirill from Russia, so I'm very happy to have some over some more overseas uh, people watching us. Do uh, feel free to join us next week, and uh, I'm uh, got you guys on Discord, if you ever see anyone say hi and I don't notice, you might want to mention that to me, because I do like to say hi. I think Kirill probably left the stream before we got a chance to say hello to him, so I feel bad about that. All right, guys, it's after 11 o'clock, so it's time to get going. Next week, we'll be back with a new game by my co-op student, Liam. He's, he was the um, creator of the Joust game, and when he got done that, he I set him to work making his own brand new game. It's a fun new game that's a little bit Frogger and a little bit Galaxian. It's called Ribbit, and I'm really looking forward to showing that to you guys next week. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I will see you guys around. Bye now. Bye. Bye.